On August 19th, 2021, Ridge Run Baseball LLC made an announcement that would change not only the landscape of minor league baseball and sports in Montana by adding the first ever professional baseball team to the Flathead Valley, but also an announcement that would physically, like, (laughs) I mean, with heavy machinery, change the landscape with the installation of a brand new state-of-the-art stadium off a stretch of Highway 93 that runs between Kalispell and Whitefish, Montana. In record time, Flathead Field rose from the dirt mound it started as, bringing to life a vision of what anybody who will come here will surely say is one of the best stadiums not only in Montana, but in the entire Rocky Mountain West. If you're from here, if you're ever lucky enough to visit, you'll hopefully get a chance to drive up Logan Pass, also called Going to the Sun Road in Glacier National Park. On that road, there's a big U-turn you'll hit early on in the drive called The Loop. It is at this turn where the drive transforms from a fairly regular mountain road to the road carved into the side of a mountain that it is known for. With a straight down drop off on one side, it makes the drive fairly terrifying, but also incredibly, incredibly awe inspiring. It opens your eyes to some of the most remarkable views that you'll ever see in your life. And that is where we are as a franchise, the Glacier Range Riders, and as a stadium about to turn a vision of beauty into reality. The summit still a long way to wa- ways away with many years to come and many years in the Flathead Valley, as well as maybe hopefully a few few PBL championships and a few players that maybe can make it to the big leagues. But we've made it to this milestone. It's taken hard work and dedication of every single person, from the owner to the front office to every single construction worker, parking attendant, and concessions worker that made this happen. Many more milestones will come, but tonight, just like if you're driving up Logan Pass, it's a chance to, to breathe some fresh air and admire the view. Good evening, folks. My name is Scott Gladstone. I'm so pleased to bring you all 48 home games in 2022 from Flathead Field in the beautiful Flathead Valley here in northwestern Montana, including tonight's first ever game as your infant Glacier Range Riders play host to the 74-year-old Billings Mustangs all the way from across the state. I don't want to get too personal because this isn't about me, this is about the players, coaches, and and most importantly, the fans. But I do want to say how much of an honor it is to be part of the team here in Glacier. I was born just minutes from this stadium, and growing up in Montana and spending every single summer around the Flathead and in Glacier National Park, it's truly a -a once-in-a-lifetime experience to bring you America's pastime to, well, (laughs) what is, in my opinion, the most beautiful place in the entire world. Thank you, Ridge Run Baseball, and every single fan of the Glacier Range Riders for letting a kid from the 406 live his dream in the place he calls home. We'll be right back. Starting lineups will be red, and we'll get a national anthem. You're listening to Scott Gladstone. The Glacier Range Riders play the Billings Mustangs right here on YouTube. Don't go anywhere.
A beautiful first ever national anthem sung here at Flathead Field, the home of your Glacier Range Riders. Let's set the scene a little bit beyond just the history being made tonight. This is a mid-season, I mean almost a quarter of the way through the season matchup between these Glacier Range Riders and the Billings Mustangs. Two teams that are looking forward to possibly getting a win here. A series win would be huge. The Billings Mustangs have not won a game on the road this year, but that's a little bit twisted in terms of the stats because every single game they've played on the road has been at the defending champion Missoula Paddleheads. The Glacier Range Riders on the other side, well, it's not just that they um, – <laughs> they haven't won a game at home, and that's because they've played every single game on the road. It's a 17-game road trip to start it off. They had six games against the great or against the Rocky Mountain Vibes in Colorado Springs. They had five against these Billings Mustangs, where they lost all five of them, and they had six against the Voyagers right over the mountains in Great Falls. Glacier comes in with a record of 7-10. and 10. Also with seven wins is the Billings Mustangs, just a game ahead of the Glacier Range Riders. They've had some rain that has not pitied them very well, and it seems like the rain cloud follows the Billings Mustangs here because it is raining. If you're wondering why we're playing with the rain, it's because there is a brand new, just like everything else in the stadium, state-of-the-art artificial turf field that is built to handle all types of Montana weather, including the rain that you're seeing now on that note i know a lot of people in billings are probably listening to this broadcast as well as maybe the radio road broadcast by billings play-by-play -play man brennan mentz but um, for those that are in the billings area that are tuning in that are experiencing the heavy droughts that we're seeing in south central montana the glacier range riders entire organization is thinking about you and hoping that you are safe and that you know we can get through the, the the flooding that is not only just currently damaging places but um, will be felt in terms of the impact for you know hopefully not too long but uh, we're, we're thinking about you and, and hoping that things get better soon it is raining here we are on a hill so we are not um, in any sort of flood danger 
Lots of questions piling in from fans, making sure there was a game tonight. But when we said yes, there was, it was met with the Montana enthusiasm that you would expect when you get a challenge to stay outside in the cold weather. Back to the game. Let's set the scene a little bit more. It's Brock Noten, the man that will throw the first ever official baseball pitch on the field. We had the ownership group throw the first ceremonial pitch, but it's Brock Noten, the man that will tow the rubber to start it off. Noten is a right-hander standing 6'2". He's originally from Oklahoma. Most recently played with the Gastonia Honey Hunters. He's been one of the better pitchers for this Range Rider squad that has struggled in terms of hurlers. The right-hander's got a 3-4-6 ERA, 1-0 record in three starts, four total appearances, alongside 13 innings pitch total, five earned runs against him, five strikeouts to four walks. He's not a guy that'll blow it by you all too often, but he knows how to get weak contact, and he can go, he can go some distance if he's able to, uh, to get that weak contact because his pitch count can stay low. On the other side, this is a Billings Mustangs roster that is very talented, and they are led by a Montana kid and a defending rookie of the year in the Pioneer League in Jalen Garcia. He's from Billings. He went to MSU Billings, played baseball there, obviously, and then signed with his hometown Mustangs and splashed on the scene quick. He Usually he is in the three spot, but he's batting in the two spot tonight and playing center field for the Mustangs. Let's get you the rest of the lineup for the Billings Mustangs. It's Taylor to lead off. Like I said, Garcia plays center field and bats second. Raper is the third baseman. He'll bat third. Wirtz fourth. Pereira fifth. Peterson sixth. And the bottom three in the lineup are Hovey, Dennison, and Ulch. The pitcher is Loriano. We'll see him in the bottom half of the first. He's going to have one of the biggest crowds in the Pioneer League this season cheering against him and for his demise. The outfield, we'll get to it as we go along, but Fry, Jared Fry is behind the plate. The infield is made up of Broussard at third. McNicholas makes his first ever appearance as a professional at short today, starting in this huge game. Ryan Cash plays second base. Brody Wofford plays first in the outfield from left to right is another debutist, Lynn Scott. And the first pitch ever is a foul ball off the bat of Cruz Taylor. Like I said, Lynn Scott's in left field, coming over from Washington and making the start not too far away here in weather that feels like the Pacific Northwest. And McConnell's the center fielder. He has been most of the year. And Morris, Livingston Morris, the leader in batting average, will be the right fielder. That ball misses low count. It's going to be one and one now against Cruz Taylor. He's been the leadoff man. Most of the year for the Billings Mustangs, he's got some pop in his bat as well as the speed on the base paths. 1-1. One, one. That one will miss. Called ball by the home plate umpire. I mentioned already plenty about the weather. It is 43 degrees at first pitch. And call it showers. And however you want to interpret that, it's going to be going up and down in terms of the rain volume throughout the night. But because, like I said, this artificial turf we will be able to play through a lot. That ball misses. It's three and one. To Cruz Taylor. Taylor, 244 on the season is his batting average. He's got four home runs, like I mentioned. Second on the team in home runs in that leadoff spot. That one will miss. Cruz Taylor, a leadoff walk, the first ever batter. At Flathead Field, will get to first on the free pass. And here is maybe the first ever ball in fair play. It's definitely a possibility, and it would be pretty cool in a twisted sort of sense if you're a Range Riders fan that a Montana kid might be able to put his dent on the first ever ball in fair play at the very least called strike there against Jalen Garcia I already mentioned Jalen Garcia six foot man stands on the right handed batter's box 25 year old out of Billings Montana went to MSU Billings and played for the Mustangs last year pickoff attempt over to first and it's going to be a pretty quick tap in by Cruz Taylor not even sliding there going to be interesting to see how the artificial turf does change the playing conditions for these outfielders and infielders. 
That one will be a ball low. Counts one and one now for Jalen Garcia. It's the top of the first inning. Cruz Taylor stands on first. Brock Noten pitching to Garcia, about to pitch a 1-1 count with no outs. Fires that one. That one's looped into the rock area over right field. I'll, I'll go over different points of this flathead field um, throughout the night. I do apologize in advance because this stadium is not fully built. We don't fully have the broadcast that we are going to be bringing you by the end of the season. It will be at least a moving camera. And I'm going to do my best to fill you in on the parts of the field that you can't see on our static camera. Check swing. Just got a piece of it by Jalen Garcia. Foul ball keeps him alive at the plate. One and two stays the count. Garcia on the season. Second on the team in batting average, 393 in 15 starts. He's got two homers and 11 RBIs. Swung on and missed. The first strikeout at Flathead Field belongs to the Montana kid. He has a few words for his man on deck in terms of Jackson Raper. Raper plays the third base position. Most games for the Billings Mustangs today is no different as he plays third and bats third in the lineup. Raper, 245 batting average on the season. He's got three triples and two home runs and 12 RBIs. That one just missed, called the ball. Count is 1-0 for the Mustangs third baseman. That one swung on a high fly ball to right field. Morris backing up. And that ball is gone. The first ever home run at Flathead Field is hit high into the sky over the right field wall by Jackson Raper. He's going to tell somebody probably to go grab that ball. Or maybe somebody from the Range Riders will grab it, be, grab it because even though it belongs to a Mustang, it is a historic moment and not the greatest start, at least not that the storybook writers drew up for the Glacier Range Riders. That one swung out. That one's heading to left, backing up is the left fielder, Lynn Scott, and he makes the snag on that one for out number two. Yeah, whatever Jalen Garcia <laughs> said to Raper there as he, he was uh, coming off after the strikeout seemed to be the right bit of advice as it was just a mean shot that hung up there and might be rolling down the road up to the stadium and trickling across Highway 93 now. This one's a dribbler down. Going to be kind of a tough play for Noten, but he's going to field it. And then just tag out the runner. One unassisted to finish off the inning, but the two-run homer by Jackson Raper is the sour taste in Noten and the Range Riders fans' mouth. They'll get their first cracks ever at Flathead Field when we come back in just a few moments.
Just as the Glacier Range Riders threw out one of their best pitchers for this first ever game at Flathead Field, the Billings Mustangs save one of their best pitchers for this contest. The third best ERA on the tier on the team belongs to Yasnir Loriano, a 2-3-8 ERA, 1-1 one one record in three appearances and two starts, 11 and one-third innings pitched. He has 11 strikeouts to five walks. He's throwing his final pitches to his catcher, Pereira, who's behind the plate. Raper over at third, the man who hit the home run last inning. Dennison will be the shortstop. Hovey over at second. Peterson's the first baseman. The outfield from left to right for the Mustangs is Wirtz, Garcia, and Taylor. The starting lineup. The inaugural starting lineup for your Glacier Range Riders. It's McConnell, the first ever Glacier man to step up to the plate. Howell will bat second. Brody Wofford in the three spot. Livingston Morris will bat fourth. Jared Fry, the catcher, bat in fifth. Sam Linscott makes his debut in the sixth hole. In the bottom three are McNicholas, Cash, and Broussard. Ben McConnell stepping in here. McConnell, the league leader in stolen bases, one of the fastest guys you'll find in the Pioneer League. Sees a called strike on the first pitch against him. McConnell on the season he also is out of players that have played most games as that one is hit weakly down the left field line. Going to get out of play off the screen. Foul ball makes it 0-2 with no outs here. Bottom of the first 2 nothing as Loriano's pitching to McConnell. He, he's up there in terms of uh, – he doesn't lead. Gabe Howell leads in terms of batting average in terms of the – players that have played most every game. Cash is second. He really flew up. He had a really successful series in Grave Falls. A ton of base hits, not a ton of extra base, and that'll be a key for Cash as we get to him batting in the eight spot. Um, as that one goes high and just completely misses the club of the Pereira, and those fans who are sitting right behind home plate wearing their ponchos and their warm coat and the rest of their rain gear uh, get kind of the first – spiciness that you get with those seats right behind home plate. Counts one and two now with no outs bottom of the first. McConnell will see another pitch here from Pereira. Let me finally get to it. 377 batting average in 16 games for McConnell. He'll see that one off the plate. Count is now two and two. Along with his 377 batting average, 10 RBIs, no homers, but two doubles for McConnell. That one will just miss. We got a full count for McConnell. And like I said, if he can get on base, he is a dangerous, dangerous man. 13 stolen bases for him. Swung on. That one's popped up and out of play. That's the first one that might do some damage in the parking lot. <laughs> As the parking lot temporarily put in, there is a remote parking just down the road at Majestic Valley Arena, which this is situated right next to. Not going to get all the way there unless somebody really thwacks one. Another foul ball there. Stays 3-2 with no outs here. Loriano versus McConnell. Bottom of the first, it's 2-0. Billings Mustangs lead the Glacier Range Riders. Swung on. That one's cracked. Another parking lot ball. Foul out of play. Glacier Range Riders, for the first time ever, are in their home whites. Rifle green on the helmets and hats. And as well as on the letters on the jersey, the numbers are red. Called strike three. McConnell knew it pretty quickly with a decisive strike three call looking by the home plate umpire. Gabe Howe now steps, in, steps into the batter's box, and it has been... It's just a road trip to remember for Gabe how he started off absolutely slugging down just a mile high over sea level, more than a mile high over sea level in Colorado Springs, one of the highest ballparks in America. If you count um, the ballpark in the Picos League, I believe it is lower than that one. But in terms of minor league baseball, it has at least been affiliated at, at one point. Colorado Springs UC Health Park stands the highest, and he blistered the ball through the thin air there, there, there as that one will miss counts 2-0. Oh. 
He comes in with a 404 batting average. 23 RBIs and five home runs. All of those home runs were hit in Colorado Springs. When he showed up in Billings, things went south for him as he was rarely able to get a hit even against these Billings Mustangs that had a lot of success against the Glacier Range Riders. That one's called a strike. It's 2-2 two and two after a 2-0 start. One out here, bottom of the first. 2-2 two -two coming in from Loriano to Hal. That one, he'll do a little duck for, and another full count coming. We've seen two full counts in each of the two first Range Rider batters. Here's the payoff pitch for Hal. Thought about swinging, did not swing, and it missed the strike zone, I believe, a little bit low here. I'm right behind your camera angle, so I don't have the best understanding of left-right in terms of if it goes wide or near the plate to the batter. Have better sense of, of high-low. That one looked like it was close to being on the plate, so I'm guessing it was a little bit low. But I'll do my best to get it from you, to get it to you as best I can. Hal is the first Range Riders to reach the base pass at Flathead Field. Brody Wofford steps in. First pitch swinging from Wofford. Comes up empty. Count goes to 0-1 with one out and a runner on first. Wofford hitting 294. Been the first baseman almost at least for part of every game, or at least in the lineup as a DH. Howell's running. The throw's going to be in time, and he got him. Crowd doesn't like it as we got a nice vocal Glacier crowd here, but it was a heck of a throw from the catcher, Pereira. It was a ball off the plate, so the count goes to one and one, but call it a caught stealing for Gabe Howell. That's the first time he's been caught this year. He's has, he has eight successful stolen bases. Not easy to do in terms of what Pereira just did there. That's the second out, and a swing and a miss makes it one and two. Two outs, bases now empty for the Range Riders' first baseman. That one will miss. Counts now 2-2 two -two with two outs here in the bottom of the first. Livingston Morris stands on deck, and his first series was the last one in Great Falls, and what a series it was for the man from Georgia Gwinnett, which when you talk about, you know, college recruiting a lot, you talk about kind of pipelines for different coaches, where they get their players from. But Georgia Gwinnett is a pipeline team. As that one is swung on and missed. Loriano faces the minimum in the bottom of the first. We'll talk more about Georgia Gwinnett and everything else. When we come back, we got eight more innings of baseball. It's 2-0 as we end the first inning.
Back here, top of the second, Tristan Peterson will be the man that will lead off for the visiting Billings Mustangs. Brock Noten, only 14 itch pitches, only 14 pitches thrown in that first inning, but it was the one pitch that he threw to Jackson Raper that made the difference. The 2-0 ball game here in the top of the second. A lot of baseball to go. And when I mentioned last inning, maybe this will come up tonight. I don't think it will. It's fairly unlikely that it will. But we will only play nine innings. If it's tied after nine, you don't know PBL rules, it goes to the knockout round as that first pitch into Peterson is a ball counts 1-0 for him with no outs here on the top of the second. It is a PBL knockout round, which has only happened twice this season, and we're, like I said, almost a quarter of the way through. So it doesn't happen often, but it is a home, round, a home run shootout of sorts. So if you love MLB All-Star Weekend combined with, you know, the ending of a must, of a soccer game that needs a winner, you'll love the knockout round. That one hits the strike zone, counts two and one here from Noten to Peterson. A uh, Each team gets to pick a player. The visiting team steps up first. Their pitching coach or whoever they want gets to throw them the ball like it's BP, and you have two minutes or five swings to hit as many home runs as possible. That's not a home run, but that's a base hit from Tristan Peterson on a line drive right up the middle. And the leadoff man is aboard just like last inning for the Billings Mustangs. Jordan Hovey now will step up. I think I finished my thought there in terms of explaining the knockout round. Two minutes or five swings, and whoever has the most home runs after each team sends a player of their choice up, then that team wins. Gives you a 50% chance of a walk-off home run, and it also means that you don't play an extra inning game until, you know, 1.30 a.m. First pitch to Hobie is fouled out of play. Already mentioned the rain plenty and the fans here. I mean, they are sticking it out. A lot of them are up on the concourse. You can't really see the fan fans at all, but it's kind of sparse in terms of the actual bowl seating here, which is incredibly beautiful. Different shades of green as well as 22 red seats around the stadium. Pitch goes off there. Counts one and one. No outs. Runner on first is Peterson for the Mustangs. A lot of fans up on the concourses, but, I, I mean – it is not possible to express the absolute bewilderment that I have in terms of everybody that's worked on this stadium. That ball or that bat is broke or just slips out of the hands. Wow, that just slipped out of the hands clean from Hovey. And <laughs> Brody Wofford just had the living daylight scared out of him as he hesitated for a second because I think he was thinking maybe about trying to catch the bat. But it just goes down as a loud, scary strike. Counts one and two now for Brock Noten. Excuse me, Jordan Hovey, who's receiving the pitches from Brock Noten. He's going to restrap up his gloves, maybe get some gloves over there. This is... A stadium that was expected to be full capacity. Obviously, not all the fans being able to make it down with the weather and, you know, uh, in certain spots there was snow nearby. But the fans that could make it down did. This is a chance for two. Bobbled by Cash, and they're just going to get one as Cash flips to McNicholas for out number one here. Talked about how the defense would be affected. Maybe we see it right there, but Cash stays with it long enough to be able to get that fielder's choice, get out Peterson, the lead runner. Hovey now standing on first with one out here, top of the second inning, and the first bat for Mason Dennison. And for Dennison, I, <laughs> I have a tidbit for you, but this is not done by me in my research. As that one will miss low. It's from Mr. McConnell, who I believe is Ben McConnell's father, Steve McConnell, at least related in some way. And Dennison played at Kaiser University, which is exactly where Ben McConnell played. 
I believe they are the Seahawks, if I'm remembering my random sports mascots correctly. 2-0 with one out here against Denison playing shortstop for the Stangs today. Ball makes it 3-0 now for Denison. One out here, top of the second, 2-0 Billings. Runner on first is Hovey. Get me over pitch, does get over the strike zone. Called strike by the home plate umpire. Counts now three and one. To the Billings shortstop, Mason Denison. Denison. It's spelled D-I, but it's pronounced more with D-E. That one will get by the catcher, Jared Fry. But it will be a free pass for Hobie every way. He rounds second a little bit, seeing if he can maybe snag one, but no chance for it. Fry gets to it. And a five-pitch walk puts runners on first and second with one out. I've already apologized for the camera angle that is not, exact, not exactly optimal for this broadcast. That is something that would get fixed. Another thing is completely personally on me with the amount of stuff we have we've had going on in this stadium. In terms of my preparation as a broadcaster for this game, it has not been as optimal it's probably been the least prepared for broadcast I've ever done in my life because when you build a new stadium and you are a part of the front office, there is uh, bigger fish to fry. And, uh, and so I apologize. More tasty tidbits will be coming about all the players as we continue. we got 47 more games with me. Um, as, as we go throughout this year, hopefully 47 games that have a little bit better weather than this because half of my job today was, you know, responding to people who didn't know if the game was going to be played. But I can tell you, if you are a fan of the Glacier Range Riders, lightning and basically monsoon-like conditions are the only way that games do not get played. That is pretty much the extent of it because we got this turf field it's getting good work tonight and it seems to be holding up pretty well other than tripping up cash on that potential double play one two count coming here to Olch swing and a miss a strike out there of Nick Olch gets a crucial second out of this inning for Brock Noten he's thrown 31 pitches through two innings Cruz Taylor well, step up again, his second plate appearance, but he walked his first time up. Cruz Taylor is probably somebody that has connections with a good amount of this Glacier Range Riders squad. He's from the University of North Georgia, where he played this, this spring. A ton of this Glacier Range Riders squad is from Georgia. As the runner is going, no, we got a pickle. And nothing will happen because the second baseman, Cash, and McNicholas, the shortstop, were spread out just a little bit too much. So even though Noten turned around and, and caught the uh, runner, Hovey, running, Hovey just retreated back, and the pull is pretty heavy on with Cash basically in shallow right field, as you can see there. Uh, so he wasn't able to get there, and McNichols, McNicholas, excuse me, uh, couldn't couldn't get there in time either. That one swung foul down the first baseline. 0-1 is the count to Cruz Taylor. Mentioned the Georgia connection. That is a product of Nick Hogan, the manager for the Glacier Range Riders. Haven't even mentioned managers today because there's been a lot of other stuff to talk about. Opening night script writes itself for a lot of it. Nick Hogan, the manager for the Glacier Range Riders, obviously his first season as the Glacier manager because it's the first season for the team and his record as a career in the Pioneer Baseball League is the record of the Glacier Range Riders. All time, seven wins and 10 losses. On the other side, a man we'll get into as this series progresses, but former MLB manager Jim Riggleman. This was a huge news story when it broke that Billings was signing Jim Riggleman, a man who has over seven 
100 games as a manager in Major League Baseball. He has managed all sorts of teams. I can't even begin to start the list. Um, I mean, I, I could start it, but I, I'm not going to start it because I don't want to leave other MLB teams out <laughs> and, uh, you know, not get all the way through it. That one will miss low. Counts now two and one with two outs here for Cruz Taylor. He's got a runner off first and second, trying to possibly drive Hovey on second in with a double. Maybe Dennison as well. This is the first season for Jim Riggleman, as I mentioned. They picked him up in the offseason. And so his record is the, as a PBL manager, is the record of the Billings Mustangs this year. Seven wins and eight losses. That one will be a little jump rope for Cruz Taylor. Good snag behind the plate by Jared Fry. Fry has been the dude for the most part behind the plate for the Glacier Range Riders. Just bringing in a new catcher today, getting into the roster, is Luis Trevino, who will do catching duties as well. Started the season, Luis Trevino did with the Grand Junction Rockies. We'll see if we see him at all in this contest, but usually most of the time catchers go the entire way, especially a good batting catcher like Jared Fry. Time is called. Everybody's going to take a deep breath. 3-1 count, two outs, a ball loads the bases, a strike pushes it full with two outs and runners on first and second. It'll be a ball. Bases will be loaded for Jalen Garcia. Garcia owns the unfortunate statistic of the first strikeout at this field. However, <laughs> he, can, he can change the feel of the game real quick. It's already not really going in the Range Riders' favor with that two-run home run last inning. But with the bases loaded, two outs, runners will be going on contact. Jalen Garcia can do some damage here. He's an extra base machine. He's got plenty of speed. But the thing that has set him apart is just in general being able to get on base by way of hits. Swung on, foul ball. Called immediately, was just barely touched at the plate by Garcia's bat, but the home plate umpire right over it to be able to call that one. A foul ball count would go to 0-1 with two outs here. Bases loaded top of the second inning. Mustangs will lead the Range Riders two to nothing. I I'm, I apologize in general for the amount I'm saying first ever tonight. That one's hit to short and it gets by McNicholas. One will score. Rounding third and coming home is Dennison. He will score. The stop signs put on at third for Cruz Taylor. A two RBI single makes it four nothing. Billings Mustangs here in the top of the second. That one just got beyond the outstretched glove of McNicholas there at short. Even if he would have been able to slap that one down, it would have been a fairly difficult play for him to handle. Hovey scores, Dennison scores. And the runners are now on the corners for the man who hit the home run his last time up. Jackson Raper, first pitch, pitch is outside. Ball one. Here with two outs, and like I mentioned, four nothing in the top of the second inning. The Billings Mustangs lead. That one will miss. Counts now two and zero. Oh. Noten struggling a little bit to find the strike zone in this inning, and when he has, a couple hard hit balls off him. Two zero, oh, two out. Coming into the third baseman for Billings. That one will miss. 3-0 and now is the count, and another chance to load the bases with the ball. Here in the top of the second, last time it did not go the way of the Range Riders. I mentioned already pretty much in my pregame as green light there on 3-0. Swung on, just got a piece of it. Count now goes to 3-1 as... Raper was trying to go yard again. But I mentioned in my pregame, five games played at Dealer Park in Billings. All five won by the Mustangs. Couple of them in pretty convincing fashion. 
That one's floated out to left field. Backing up is the left fielder, Lynn Scott. He makes the grab out there, battling the rain. And that'll be out number three. Two come across on the Garcia, two RBI single. It's 4 nothing. We head to the bottom of the second. Due up for Glacier, Morris, Fry, and Lynn Scott. Back here, Livingston Morris, a man who in, in, hopes to be a continued game changer through, throughout the season for the Glacier Range Riders. is the man that steps up now playing right fielder, right, right field. He is the right fielder. That's what somebody that plays right field does. That one will miss counts 2-0 now for a Livingston Morris. No outs here as he leads off the bottom of the second inning. It's 4-0. Mustangs lead the Range Riders. Big swing and a miss, miss there from Morris, a man who set the Georgia Gwinnett single-season home run record with 19 boomsticks. I don't know. I, I'm just going to associate this man with the boomstick because he, he can bring it. As he already has two home runs on the season, hit in Centene Stadium where the Great Falls Voyagers play. Fouls that one off. Counts now three and two for the Range Riders outfielder. Georgia Gwinnett, it's not an easy school to set baseball records at either. It is one of the pedigree schools in NAIA baseball. And that's the reason why Nick Hogan has focused on creating such a good pipeline with the Grizzlies down there. And a walk for Morris to lead off the inning as he sees that one go outside. Georgia Gwinnett, two years ago, won the national championship at the NAIA level. Gabe Howell was a part of that squad, as well as every single Georgia Gwinnett player that you'll see on this uh, Glacier Range Riders roster. A couple pip pitchers as well. Tomorrow's expected starter, Rob Hamby. Good secondary lead over at first there from Morris. I wonder if they'll take a second look on him. I mentioned a good catcher at the plate hitting-wise for the Range Riders. Jared Fry steps up 0-1 after he took a first pitch strike. That one will miss low. Counts 1-1. One one. No outs here. Morris is on first in the bottom of the second. 4 to nothing. Range Riders are trailing the Billings Mustangs. Mustangs wearing their black tops, gray bottoms. Red lettering and white numbering on those jerseys. 
for the Billings Mustangs. That one will miss high. Counts now 2-1 and one for Jared Fry, the switch hitting catcher out of Avila University. That's where he went to high school. I mean, he didn't go to high school at a university. He went to college at a university. And he's hitting 365 on the season. And a swing and a miss there as the catcher Pereira does take note of the secondary lead that Morris is having. Gives a little bluff throw over there. We'll see if we see any snap throws down to first from him or possibly something from Loreano. I want to miss low. It's going to be a full count here to Jared Fry. Along with his 365 batting average, he has one home run, which he hit in the last series against Great Falls, which was a laser to the outfield, and nine RBIs for Fry. Swung on, that one's high in the air. Floating over is a Raper as well as the shortstop Dennison. Neither of them can get to it, and it gets out of play. A mulligan coming for Jared Fry. A lot of these guys, I mean, just in general, if you look at their college career, if you look at their professional career, whether they're, you know, maybe they're just rookies showing up or whether they've been around for a while, they have just incredible journeyman stories. And that is something that as the season goes along, be able to talk more about. That ball misses outside. Two walks by Yasnir Loriano to start off the bottom of the second. Brings up a debut kid, Sam Linscott. He got the final out. Of the top of the second, when that ball floated all the way to the edge of the warning track, but he was able to snag it and make sure no more runs got across for the Billings Mustangs. Now the Washington kid steps in to see his first pitch as a professional. He is <laughs> fresh off the road here from Lewis Clark College. As this is his... First pitch you will see when we get there. <laughs> Waiting for Loriano after the pause, and it is a ball. Counts now 1-0. It's Morris on second, Fry on first. Originally from Marysville, Washington, is Lynn Scott. I remember him very specifically as a Washington kid because when I went in the clubhouse today, he was wearing a Mariner's hat. And I commended him on that because we're both Mariners fans. One and one is the count after that one's a strike. Runner on second is Morris. Runner on first is Fry. No outs here. Bottom of the second. Four to nothing ball game. That one will miss low and in the dirt. Lost for a second by the catcher Pereira. Didn't realize it was just at his feet. And then it squirted out kind of like a hockey goalie or something like that when you see it get caught in the pads and then maybe try and trickle across the goal line. But Pereira quick to it, and he didn't have to protect the goal line behind him. Morris doesn't go. That means Fry had no chance to go either from first. Two and one is the count now with no outs to Lynn Scott. Lewis Clark State is an NAIA school. And that one swung on. A chance for two here. Flip for one. Lin Scott trying to run it out, but he will not. I don't know if that was double clutch. I was zooming my eyes in on first to see if the play was going to be made, but Hobie just held up and either double clutched it or was just making sure that Morris didn't score from third. So it just goes down as a 6-4 fielder's choice in your scorebook at home. Austin McNicholas here. This is a guy that has an interesting story, and I haven't been able to hear much from him on it. But he's a kid from Austin, Texas. Originally went to his hometown University of Texas Longhorns baseball team before transferring and, and finding a really good home for him at LSU Shreveport. And just the amount of support from his friends and family when he got signed by the Range Riders, can tell you kind of the quality of his character and how many people are rooting for him as he takes his first crack at the plate, batting in the seventh spot, wearing the number seven. Could the first ever RBI 
at Flathead Field belong to the debutante. Misses high. Counts one and one. Now one out. Runner on first is Lynn Scott. McNichols stands 5'10". Bats out of the right-handed batter's box. He's going to receive from Loriano. It'll be Loriano's 40th pitch. As that one is another loose bat. <laughs> As everybody is having trouble. Somebody might be able to get a souvenir at some point with one of these bats slipping out, but we're going to take a quick break for maybe some stickum or something to be applied, whatever is a legal substance, at least drying off the bat for McNicholas. Austin McNicholas from Austin, Texas. One and two is the count. One out. Runner on first is Lynn Scott. A double play ends the inning without a run across the board. But a base hit will easily get Livingston Morris across for the first ever home run in Flathead Field history. One and two. One out. Runners on the corners. The pitch from Loriano sets and fires. Swung on, and again he loses his bat. And he is looking down at his hands with kind of astoundment. As we're going to get a conference. I don't know how heavy the rain is going out there. So maybe they're going to be talking about the conditions. As Ryan Cash steps up, I wonder if they're talking about the conditions with two straight bats slipping out of the hands of Austin McNicholas. That was a swing and a miss for strike three. Don't, don't know exactly what they were talking about. They, it did seem to exchange some words with the pitcher, Loriano. Maybe talking about his set. They didn't seem to say anything after their meeting, so probably just... Yeah, I can only speculate up here. I'm, I'm not even going to try Oh, oh, two outs. Ryan Cash, the man at the plate. Swings on that one. Foul ball out of play. Ryan Cash in and out of the lineup for the first two series, including the series with Billings Mustangs, but he became a close to a solidified starter at that second base position when he went on fire. We got the run going from the runner going from first and a successful stolen base by Sam Linscott, the first successful stolen base by a range rider here in their home stadium. It was a ball as well. Count goes one and one. But we've seen some speed now from Linscott and on that slide, I don't know if you were watching intensely on his slide into second, but there's definitely that uh, slickness in the turf. As that one's off the plate, escapes the glove of Pereira, but he keeps it in front of him. Two and one now, two outs. Lynn Scott at second, Morris at third. Morris reached with a leadoff walk. And Lynn Scott got on after grounding into a fielder's choice. Two outs here, still no hits for the Range Riders. Looking for the first ever hit, the first ever run. For a Glacier Range rider here at Flathead Field, Ryan Cash trying to be the man to do it. The 2-1. Swung on, foul ball. Count goes 2-2 two and two now for Ryan Cash. Ryan Cash went or finished his college career. A lot of these guys, when I say they went to college somewhere, I won't say all of the places they went to college, but there's such a high transfer rate in all college sports over the last couple of years, but baseball throughout really its history, at least the 21st century, is at a high transfer rate among players. Ryan Cash graduated from Oral Roberts, played for the Gary South Shore Railcats last year. Swung on, that one's hit to Peterson over at first. He fields, and he's going to go to first himself for out number three. So Livingston Morris crosses the plate, but it does not count. Still no runs and no hits for the Glacier Range Riders as we head to the third inning. It's 4-0, the Mustangs lead.
back here as music played just a little bit long and time had to be called to stop it. One of those simple fixes. As a called strike there makes it 0-1. Gabe Wirtz is the batter batting in the four spot. That one will miss. Count will be one and one now. For the Billings Mustangs left fielder. Last time up, lined out on a good crack, but I died into the glove of the left fielder. Holding on to the bat there. Every time I see a hard swing, I'm expecting fireworks, and eventually somebody's just going to fly one right over the fence there. He can have as big and as protective netting as you want. As that one is swung on a miss, strike three. First batter goes down by way of the K. Brian Pereira, the catcher, steps in now. 0-1 is he as he dribbled that one down the first base line where Noten picked it up and pressed the tag into him his last time up. So 0 for 1 today is Pereira. Pitch there, misses off the plate. Count is 1-0 and for the Mustangs catcher. That one swung on, hit well out into left field, and it dies right in front of Lynn Scott for a base hit from Brian Pereira. Good little line drive there and a good way to get on. The fourth hit of the game for the Billings Mustangs. Puts Pereira on first with one out here in the top of the third. Up comes Tristan Peterson. Tristan Peterson led off the second inning with a base hit up the middle and later scored when he got all the way around. I mean, he had an easy walk from third on the Garcia base hit. That one will hit the batter. And so he'll have an easy walk to first as now runners will be on first and second with one out here in the top of the third inning. I scratch that. Peterson didn't, get, didn't have a run scored. He was thrown out on the fielder's choice before this man, Jordan Hovey, eventually scored on that Garcia single. First pitch coming in to Hovey. One out here. Runners on first and second. That one will miss the plate. Count is 1-0. and 51 pitches thrown now by Brock Noten. A pair put on him in the top of the first and the top of the second as the Glacier Range Riders look not only for their first ever win at Flathead Field, but also for their first ever win over the Billings Mustangs. Foul back right into the netting. And you could see, maybe you could see, don't think this camera is that high definition, but <laughs> you can see some sort of sense of the amount of moisture just clinging on to the netting behind home there. 1-1, one, one, one out, runner on second is Pereira. Runner on first is Peterson. Pitch coming from Noten into Hovey. Misses off the plate. Count is 2-1. and one. Nobody up. The Glacier Range Riders pen still... Can work noting a little bit more. That's what Nick Hogan expects. And that's what it seems he will do with nobody warming. Two one splashes the zone. Counts now two and two with one out. Runners on first and second. Well, if you're a new Range Riders fan, you gotta get to know the Pioneer League a little bit more. It's a league that has been around. For a long time, since 1939, most of its uh, time has been a affiliated rookie affiliate of Major League Baseball. As that one's fouled off, count stays two and two. For example, these Billings Mustangs, for the longest part of their existence, have been an affiliate of the Cincinnati Reds. When I was growing up in Montana, we had the Helena Brewers, who are obviously a, an affiliate of the Milwaukee Brewers. In Helena, that team ended up moving to Colorado Springs and becoming the Rocky Mountain Vibes. That one will miss low. Counts now three and two. One out. 
Runners on first and second. Some of the players that have played for these Billings Mustangs, I mean, they got a, a long list that I won't get all the way into, but they do have two Hall of Famers that have put on the Billings Mustangs uniform, including George Brett and Trevor Hoffman. George Brett when they were a Royals affiliate and Trevor Hoffman when they were an affiliate of the Reds. That one's hit to short. McNicholas Fields, he throws for one. There's going to be no throw over to first from Cash. That was tricky for McNicholas because he had to range to his right there and then throw off balance and just make sure he got that fielder's choice out at second base. He did that successfully, and now runners will be on the corners with two outs. As we get Mason Dennison stepping up, who walked in his first plate appearance here in the Flathead Valley. Already mentioned it in my opener, but a 74-year history as that one's a high foul ball. Going to maybe be a souvenir. No, it will be just beyond the outstretched glove of Jared Fry. He went down to his knees and was sliding on the turf. It stayed in play. It was a very high-level difficulty possible catch right there for Jared Fry. I don't think he's going to be given... Uh, an error there, as sometimes you see on those foul balls, there's an error given because for the reason that, in theory, it would have been the third out if it would have been caught. I don't think that one falls under that presumption, and it doesn't look like it in terms of what I'm seeing on the scoreboard. Counts 0-1 for Dennison after the... Exciting foul ball. This one's hit down the right field line. It's drifting foul, and it will go foul. It's hit into that rocks area that you can't see on your broadcast, but there's a, a rocky side beyond the concourse here, and then there's a grassy hillside, and those are the two general admission side that will be opened, I believe, later in the summer, but it all depends on kind of the construction of the stadium and uh, what, is, what is priority, but I think getting more fans in the stadium is definitely a priority um, for the management here. Counts 0 and 2, and that one waste pitch will go away. Counts 1 and 2 now. Two outs, runners on the corners here, top of the third. Billings leads Glacier 4 to nothing. On the other side, talking about ballparks, Dealer Park is one of those legendary parks in the Rocky Mountain West. That one swung on, just got a piece of it, and Jared Fry. Too far away from it to try and catch that one for a foul tip. It ends up right around his feet, but it'll be just enough contact made by Denison to buy another ticket. Dealer Park is is a, is a pretty legendary field. Obviously hosted a lot of players that went on to play in Major League Baseball. They built it after another foul ball. Their count stays one and two. They built it after the retirement of Cobb Field which was the initial stadium in Billings, Montana. Get you to know the Pioneer League a little bit more. We'll say the standings in the bottom half of this inning. But for now, let's see a 1-2 with two outs. Swung on and tipped at the plate and just got onto the turf. So again, just narrowly missing. A foul tip strikeout will do one two again. And this right here, what you're seeing from Denison is what you saw a lot of in the first series between these two squads. These two pitch foul balls. Called strike three there. He called it in the zone there, even though it did not end up in the zone. It must have just glanced the outside edge, and it's a called strike three, the first shutout inning. For a visitor is Noten. Still 4 nothing. We head to the bottom of the third.
A rousing rendition. Another first ever here at Flathead Field of Sweet Caroline. As the fans here, loud and jubilant in their enjoyment. Like I've already mentioned, a lot of them not making their way into the bowl seating to try and sit in the wet stadium back chairs. There, A lot of them are just sitting at the top of the concourse enjoying beverages of all sorts as Brent Broussard will step up the final starter to see an at-bat in this contest. Brent Broussard is a guy that has been a huge weapon for this Glacier Range Rider squad. He'll see the first pitch go high. Count is 1-0. The former LSU Tiger, one of those guys that has had that journeyman feel to him. And not only did he Spent his college career in Baton Rouge, but he has spent some time in Billings, Montana. He was a member of these, this Mustang squad last year. He sees a strike there. Counts one and two. No outs. Bottom of the third. Four nothing Billings. Just 5'10 stands Broussard, but he is really an on-base machine, and I don't want to jinx him when I say that. We'll see the one, two. He'll go high. Counts two and two. Finds a way to get on base, and when he gets on, he's got some wheels one of the many steel threats for this Glacier Range Riders squad that is not afraid to try and swipe a bag. He's got seven stolen bases on the year. This one looped up into right field, dying, though, into the glove of Cruz Taylor. No oppo hit there for Broussard as Glacier Range Riders still look for their first hit of the ball game against Laureano. Ben McConnell will step up for his Second time, struck out looking in his first at-bat, did McConnell. McConnell, I mentioned, played his college ball at Kaiser, which is a NAI school down there in Florida. But most recently, he was with the Eastside Diamond Hoppers, which are in the United Shores League. Away to Detroit, they play at one stadium. There's four different teams. And they all play at that stadium just so there's a game every night, sometimes two. Called strike there, counts two and one, one out. I said I'm gonna introduce you to the Pioneer Baseball League if you don't know them, and you're tuning in for Pioneer Baseball for the first time. That one missed high, counts three and one. Now hitters count for McConnell, three, one, one out. We're gonna introduce it to you by showing you, not showing you, because we do not have graphics yet. <laughs> I'm gonna show you with my voice as to walk for McConnell. Look for him on the base pass here. Not long before he will try a stolen base, I am sure of it. The standings, though, in first place in the North Division, which thus far this season has been the dominant division, 13-4 and four record, the Idaho Falls Chuckers. They get a great support uh, of fans down at Melaleuca Field in Idaho Falls. The Great Falls Voyagers, who the Range Riders just finished up a series with, are in second place, just a half game back of the Chuckers. First pitch coming in here to Howell will be not swung on. Called a ball. Didn't look that far off in any direction. Counts 1-0. and oh. Missoula, the Paddleheads, formerly the Osprey. Well, at least when I went to games, I saw the Helena Brewers play the Missoula Osprey. As we get a pickoff attempt over to keep McConnell honest. Now they are the Paddleheads, a big rebrand from them. It's been successful. They get a great crowd over there in Missoula. 11 and 6 record for them this year. They're two games back of first place. Billings, who you're seeing right here, 7 and 8, five games back of first place. And the Range Riders, as that one misses, counts now 2 and 0. Oh. Struggling to find the zone here from Loriano, but not missing by a lot on these. Maybe a little bit frustrated at the calls he's getting more than his own control. 2 and 0, oh, one out. McConnell on first. The pitch. Missing. 3 and 0. Oh. The final team in the North Division, joining Idaho Falls, Great Falls, Missoula, Billings, is the northernmost team in the Pioneer League, and that's your Glacier Range Riders who make their home in the shadow of Glacier National Park here in the Flathead Valley. Get me over pitch does get over. 3-1 is the count now with one out. South Division, we don't see them a lot. We don't see Ogden at all, Homer away. We don't see Northern Colorado at all, Homer away. We don't see Grand Junction at all, Homer away. That's just how the scheduling worked out. There's kind of no rhyme or reason as the runner's going, but swinging on it is Howell. Makes the count full, 3-2 with 
One out. And McConnell will have to take the walk back to first. The only Southern Division teams that the Glacier Range Riders will see, well, or have already seen, they saw the Rocky Mountain Vibes. They opened up with a six-game series there. They won five out of those six games, and that's the team that's currently in last in the South Division. Just two wins, one against Rocky Mountain, one against Idaho Falls. They're eight and a half games back of first place, and that one will just miss, not by much, but two walks in a row here have put two speedy runners on for the number three man. Brody Wofford, he can pack a punch in his hit. The man steps into the left-handed batter's box, does Brody Wofford. Wofford, one of the bigger position players for this Range Rider squad. When we get into the bullpen, we'll, we'll talk about some pitchers that uh, really can... Uh, Intimidate you with their size. That one swung on. Hit up the middle. Chance for two. Tag for one. Throw to first in time. A 6-3 double play to get Loriano out of the jam. He struggled with control, but when he hit the strike zone there, Wofford put it right to the shortstop, Dennison, who turns two. Still no hits and no runs for the Glacier Range Riders here. We're through three innings. We head to the fourth, 4-0. Four Billings leads. Back here at Flathead Field, Scott Gladstone. Thanks for joining us in the rain. I'm not in the rain. Thank goodness for that. First pitch to the leadoff man of the inning for Billings. Nick Olch is a ball low and in the dirt. It's not dirt. It's artificial turf. That's the reason why we're playing in the rain. But... I'll call it dirt most of the time. <laughs> Just three innings in. It's already, I mean, the lack of sleep in the past couple of days already getting to me a little bit here. So continue to bear with me. That one is in there for a strike. Counts one and two, swung on, carrying out to left field. And some adjustments made by Lynn Scott, but he ends up grabbing that. Carried well to the opposite field off the bat of Olt, who does have power. But it does not get beyond Lynn Scott. Tell you some of the dimensions of Flathead Field, which we good to know if you're into that thing, but maybe you don't care. 
surprising to me that Cruz t- that, that uh, Jackson Raper, the man who hit the first home run, hit it over that right field wall because it is a little bit further out and a little bit higher up. But he did it. 338 to right field. As the first pitch to Cruz, Taylor misses, counts 1-0 and with one out here in the top of the fourth. The 1-0 coming in. Thought about going, didn't go, maybe should have because it's a called strike. Counts now 1-1 one and one for the Billings leadoff man. 1-1, one, one, top fourth, one out. Nobody on for Taylor, the right fielder. Noten kicks, fires, swung on. That one is golfed out to right field and falls down and then gets beyond the right fielder, Livingston Morris. Has extra bases written all over it. Turning for third is Cruz Taylor, easily in there. A stand-up play, but now how does it get scored is the question. It fell in front of Livingston Morris. Did it touch his glove? This is the first... <laughs> First debate coming for our brand new scorekeepers over in the scoring booth. I'll let you know what they say on the scoreboard. I don't see an error popping up over there. So, and I didn't see it hit Livingston Morris's glove, so call it a triple for Cruz Taylor, at least at the current moment, until we see an error pop up on the scoreboard. Jalen Garcia misses. He misses seeing a strike there. Noten missed the strike zone. Counts now 1-0. One, oh. one out runner on third is Taylor. Easily speed to get home on a fly ball that's fairly deep into the outfield. But Jalen Garcia would love to get another base hit to knock in a run. He already has two RBIs on a base hit earlier today. 1-1 one and one is the count for Garcia. Runner on third in the top of the fourth. One out. That one swung on. Another ball looping out to right field. And it's foul. It's foul as Livingston Morris was sliding to try and get to that one. But he was in a sticky predicament there because if he touches that in fair territory, even if it's foul, the benefit of the doubt goes that it's then a fair ball. So (laughs) he was literally walking the line there. Ends up as a foul ball. Count goes to one and two. Let me get through the rest of the dimensions real quick. Right center field is 380. Left center field, 376. Left field line is pretty advantageous for right-handers. We haven't seen a a healthy ball hit there yet. A couple ones that got to the fringe of the warning track for Billings, but no further. And center field, of course, this is one of those great touches that you'll notice if you're a Montana and coming out to Flathead Field. Center field, 406, as that one's a base hit and an RBI for Jalen Garcia, the kid whose cell phone number, I assume, is an area code that starts with 406, the area code for all Montanans. He uh, gets his third base hit of the day, makes it 5 nothing Billings here as they are very much in a driver's seat of playing spoiler for this first ever game here in the Flathead Valley. First meeting at the mound. It's not Nick Hogan out there. It's pitching coach Mike Spears that's going to come out and have a quick chat with Noten. In general, he keeps his chats pretty quick. He takes his time coming out. Um, But it is time to talk to him for the first time as he has allowed five runs on six hits. And again, no error credited to the right fielder Livingston Morris on that triple by Cruz Taylor. So it will be an earned run against Noten here, who's through three and a third with one uh, one out, with five against him and one out. That one will miss and heads up base running by Jalen Garcia as He'll advance on what I believe we scored as a wild pitch as it was in the ground.
Garcia now in the scoring position. Plenty of wheels for him. If Jackson Raper is able to get a base hit, one, two, one and two outing for him thus far with that first home run that the fans here have seen. They haven't even been able to see a base hit from their home side range riders. They're just looking for that. But Billings looking to add on to their tally. <laughs> and, I mean, real any more is pretty firmly in the driver's seat. That one is stabbed over to the rocks in the right foul area, right field foul area. Counts two and one now, one out. 75th pitch of the day right there for Brock Noten. We got a left-hander warming up in the bullpen. I do not have binoculars on me. And it's looking through the rain tainted glass here it's pretty hard to see who that is called strike there counts now two and two with one out two raper I mentioned the other south division teams I'll go through it one more time to get their full standings Rocky Mountain in last place at two and 15 Ogden's in first at 10 and six that one completely slipped out of the grasp of Noten, but the thing is Garcia was running on the pitch, so he just gets a successful stolen base. And he's over to third now, one out runner on third, 3-2 pitch upcoming. So Ogden's in first with a 10-6 record in the south, and Northern Colorado 8-8, eight eight, two games back at them. They're a pseudo brand new franchise as they moved over from Orem and took last year off. Grand Junction is in the third spot at 7-9, and, and the Boise Hawks are 5-12, and 12, taking up fourth place in the Southern Division. That one will be ball four. And kind of a weird walk to first there by Jackson Raper, who instead of just flicking his bat over and having the, the bat boy come out and grab it, he, he walks halfway over to the dugout and hands it to him as we are going to get a pitching change for the Glacier Range Riders, they got runners on the corners and one out here in the top of the first, top of the fourth. Oh, my goodness. Day one, day one for us all. Brock Noten ends with 78 pitches. We'll tell you about the new pitcher and give you Noten's final line when we get back. It's five to nothing here in the top of the fourth. Chris Allen is the new man on the mound for the Glacier Range Riders. The first ever pitching substitution made at Flathead Field belongs to him. And his first pitch is swung on and hit high out into shallow right field. Livingston Morris was playing a long way back, but it's a great job by Ryan Cash to grab that pop-up and get a crucial out number two. Garcia may be thinking about it, depending on if Cash maybe fell to the ground or anything trying to catch that. But with Cash grabbing it, staying upright, and then basically 
running that ball back to the pitcher, Allen. It's one pitch, one out for Chris Allen. We've got two outs now here in the top of the fourth and runners on the corners in this 5 nothing game. Stepping up is Brian Pereira, who singled his most recent time up. Lefty-lefty matchup. Maybe I'll have a chance to introduce Allen a little bit more before we end the inning, but maybe not. As this one sit out to center field. And McConnell will snag it for out number three. Chris Allen comes on. Two pitches, two outs. Ignites a little glacier crowd. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. Five to nothing. Billings leads the Range Riders. We'll see the four, five, six batters in this half inning, at least for Morris. Uh, I mean, for, oh my goodness. For Loriano. <laughs> it's cold, and I think it's numbing my brain a little bit because I've got to crack that window open, and just that little crack in the window is doing, doing me pretty good up here in the press box. Didn't think you'd need heaters in a baseball press box, but... You know, just sometimes you can never read Montana. It'll be Loriano that will see Morris Fry and Lynn Scott as he tries to keep his no-hitter that he's got going, continuing to go as he has seen no hits come across his resume in the first three innings here, while six have happened for Billings, and they've scored five runs off of that. Livingston Morris did get all the way to third, in his most, or in his first time up to the plate, reached on a walk, and then was left stranded at third there. That's the closest the Range Riders have come to scoring a run. Loriano's pitch count is fairly high for just three innings, 63 pitches thrown. Of course, you're going to want to prioritize his health if you're Jim Riggleman. Big swing and a miss there. As you see that bat speed from Livingston Morris. Jeez. A one, no outs. Base is empty, bottom of the fourth. Misses outside. Counts now one and one. Morris, I mentioned, just arrived a week ago. Made his debut last Tuesday. As that one swung on, base hit. Livingston Morris owns... A mark that will go in the record book here at Flathead Field. The first range rider to get on with a base hit. And you could feel a, a sigh of relief mixed with a cheer from the range riders crowd who was starting to notice more and more the zero in the hit column for the range riders. But he leads off this inning with a base hit. And for Loriano, who the reason why his pitch count is fairly high is because he has struggled with control and has walked Maybe one too many batters. Speaking of, he misses with the ball there. Counts 1-0 and to Jared Fry, who walked his only time he's stepped up this game. That one will miss. 2-0 and now. The catcher, Pereira, takes a few extra steps than usual, walking that one back to him, trying to get some sort of message across. Counts now 2-0, and no outs. Morris on first here. In the bottom of the fourth, Fry will see it as we get a balk. And plenty of jeers from the crowd there. That one slipped out of the grip of Loriano. He throws that ball to be 
dried off by a bat boy as clearly the moisture having some effect on him there. But the Bach will get Morris into second, and that's crucial because it gets out of a double play opportunity, which we've seen way too many of both on the road at Dealer Park, if you're a Range Riders fan that watched those games there, as well as a couple today. 2-0 count. No outs. Morris sits on second. That one swung on. Sounded like a broken bat from Fry. Raper's going to go over, and he's going to grab that one in foul territory for out number one. Number six hitter, Sam Lynn Scott comes up, reached on that fielder's choice and was stranded at second after stealing a base his last time up. The newbie trying to be the first Glacier Range Rider bringing a run here at their home stadium. First pitch misses low, counts 1-0, and bottom of the fourth here. Runner on second, one out. Lynn Scott, already mentioned out of Marysville, Washington. Funny enough, there is a pitcher that just joined the roster, Justin Coleman, who's from Maryville, Tennessee. That one is hit into center field. Livingston Morris is given the green light. And the first ever RBI by a Glacier Range Rider is Sam Linscott. The run is scored by Livingston Morris. And the crowd is ignited as the goose egg is off the board for your Glacier Range Riders. Austin McNicholas now is the man to step up. That one, really no chance for Garcia to throw home as he, he was lucky that he cut that one off in the gap. Could have been extra bases for a Linscott as it was a, a healthy hack that drove beyond Dennison, the shortstop. And like I said, the Speedy Garcia had to sprint pretty hard to get to. McNicholas now stepping in. He sees a ball to start it off. Counts 1-0. Lynn Scott on first. Already got that stolen base today. And now, after getting his RBI single, what can he do on first? McNicholas, the shortstop, 0 for 1 today is he. He had that trouble slipping or gripping his bat. Potential for a double play, and it will be a successful 6-4-3 double play to end the inning. Lynn Scott gets the Range Riders on the board with a RBI single. It's 5-1. to one. We head to the fifth.
Welcome back to Flathead Field. The name was established the same day that the Glacier Range Riders name was, name was established. That was on January 19th of this year. The incredible alacrity in which this stadium was put together is something to be marveled at, I think, by pretty much anybody who knows all that it takes to put a stadium together. Just a few days ago when I visited here to kind of check, check out the press box area, it was still a hard hat construction zone site. And, man, the past <laughs> past week has been an absolute whirlwind for everybody involved with the Range Riders organization. As that pitch will miss outside, 2-0. and One of the unique things about this field uh, that was – you know, I already mentioned the 406 out in center field as, you know, a, a point to to hit on as much Montana pride as possible. So that one hits the zone. Counts 2-1 and one here from Chris Allen and Tristan Peterson in the top of the fifth, no outs. Um, but not only just show the Montana pride in the ballpark, but invest in Montana as well. And, and, and you saw the ownership group in the front office as this one's going to be a base hit out to center field for Tristan Peterson. He's 2-2 two for two today has reach base every time he's been up. Leadoff single there. Like I was saying, the investment in, in Montana, Montana made products from the benches in the dugouts that are Montana wood to the foul poles in, in the outfield. Uh, pretty much everything that you could make in Montana um, and use Montana products to make. The ownership group did that, um, and, and that's just tremendously important thing of not only realizing the investment financially from the jobs um, that it brings to the Flathead Valley, but also investing financially in making sure that you know this is this is a Montana built ballpark. Um, of course, all are welcome here uh, because there's a lot of tourists that come to this area. Um, and we can't wait to have people from all over the, the, the country and the globe. Um, but realize that, you know, you're, you're in a special place um, when, you, when you come to Montana. And, and uh, the ballpark represents that really well. Um, to continue when you do travel to Montana, the kind of immersive, immersive experience. 1-1 one, one pitch is inside. Counts now 2-1. and one. Sitting on first is Peterson. Batters Jordan Hovey is over 2 today. Does have a run scored. Five to one here, top of the fifth. Chris Allen never got to introduce him last inning, so I will do that after this next pitch. Two one coming into Hobie. Swung on weak foul ball is going to get out of play. Counts now two and two. For Chris Allen, he's a six four. Southpaw pitcher out of San Rafael, California. He has spent some time in affiliated baseball, was drafted by the Cubs organization, played for the Eugene Emeralds, which is the low A affiliate of the Chicago Cubs, was moved up to the South Bend Cubs as well, and that's where he was last season before now playing out here in the Pioneer League with the Range Riders. Breaking ball is swung on, floated out to center field. McConnell takes some steps to his left, takes some steps to his right, and ends up snagging that one for out number one here in the top of the fifth. This season, Chris Allen has been one of the top options out of the bullpen for the Glacier Range Riders. He's been hit hard a couple times, but for the most part has kept it in check pretty well. A 6.75 ERA, 101 record, six appearances, 13 and one thirds innings pitched, which is the most among pitchers that have not started a game. He's got 11 strikeouts to six walks, and the thing is, that 6.75 ERA, it's with relievers. You know how it can be. It cannot be fully indicative of their outings because they have one where they. Get five runs against them and only one out, and they can have five shutouts, and still that ERA is a hard time coming down. O 
one is the count now. To Mason Dennison. One out, runner on first. Check swing. Appeal over to first, said he didn't go, so it will be a ball. Counts now one and one, one out with a runner on first. Dennison already mentioned that he played college baseball at Kaiser University with Ben McConnell, graduated a year after McConnell, who finished up last year and then played in that United Shores Baseball League in the suburban Detroit area. That one swung on, and it's going to get by the second baseman, Cash, turning and heading for three. Third is Peterson. He'll get there successfully. Runners on the corners now with one out in the top of the fifth. Number nine batter Nick Olch steps up now. His third trip to the plate, fly out and a strikeout for the Mustangs DH. Kind of a rare lineup quirk. You don't... You see it a fair amount, but still not all that often where the DH for the Mustangs is batting ninth in the lineup. Usually you see the DH in a 3-4-5 spot. So that one's in the zone against him for the Range Riders. Gabe Howell's been the DH for the most part in about the past week or so, week and a half. As that one swung on. Hit over to first, and Brody Wofford... We'll just go and tap first. An RBI ground out from Nick Olch makes it 6-1 to one in favor of the visiting Billings Mustangs. Tricky play there for Wofford, thinking about the possibility of turning two, not even considering throwing home to Jared Fry to possibly tag out the runner. So it just goes down as an unassisted out to the first baseman, 3-U. For out number two, runner Dennison advances to second. Leadoff man steps up for his fourth trip to the plate today. Two walks and a triple. Not a bad stat line for Cruz Taylor. He didn't like that strike call on him. Count goes 0-1 to the right fielder. 6-1 is our score here in the top of the fifth with two outs. Scoreboard has not been updated yet. This is an entirely self-run broadcast. And I'll try and take a second to do that, which I'll do right now. As that one misses, counts now one and one. I did forget to update the inning as well, so I'll do that as well. Why not? One and one count, two outs into Cruz Taylor. Lefty lefty matchup between Allen and Taylor. The first time that Taylor has seen the bullpen pitcher. As that one will miss, counts now two and one to Cruz Taylor. Scoreboard's all updated. <laughs> two and one is the count. As of right now, we do not have the Balls and strikes and outs on there. That's why I'm keeping myself honest to remind you as much as I am, and I apologize if I'm reminding you too much what the situation is. But better to be overly cautious than underly, as that one is under the strike zone. 3-1 is the count now. Two outs. Runner on second is Ulch. Excuse me, is Dennison. And Cruz Taylor's got a hitter's count here. Looking to get another extra base hit as he tripled his last time up. That was the one that bounced in front of Livingston Morris. Kind of took a weird bounce for Morris. Couldn't get his glove to it. And Cruz Taylor, with his speed, gobbled that one up easy for a three-bagger. Breaking ball there. The crowd thought it broke into the zone. Cruz Taylor was halfway down to first before Jared Fry even... Grab that ball out of his glove. A walk puts Taylor on. And Jalen Garcia, who's two for three today, will step up again. Pitch coming in. 
Misses up and in from Chris Allen. one -oh, two outs, top of the fifth. Runner on first, runner on second. They'll be going on contact with those two outs. Allen kicks, fires, up and in. Chin music turns away. Garcia counts. Now 2-0 and for the Billings outfielders. Let's look around the league right now. Grand Junction beat Northern Colorado earlier today. That's on the campus of the University of Northern Colorado where the Northern Colorado Owls are playing their home game. They took an alternate approach to the Glacier Range Riders in the respect that they're taking their time building their stadium and opening their stadium. As that one misses, 3-0 and is the count. Now one ball will load the bases for the number three batter, Jackson Raper, who already has a home run today. 3-0 with two outs coming. Swung on, high fly ball out to left field. Lynn Scott getting to the track. And it gets over the wall for a home run, a three-run shot by Jalen Garcia. And the first one that gets out over the left field wall belongs to a Montana kid in Jalen Garcia. It is 9-1 to one in favor of the visiting Billings Mustangs. That was on a 3-0 count. As that, oh my goodness, that one hits the net. And another slip out of the hands as maybe Raper was trying new gloves out and immediately runs over to the dugout to switch his gloves out there. 0-1 is the count after that swing and a miss. For Jalen Garcia, that's his third home run of the year. He had a team-leading number last year. And for the Billings Mustangs, a team that is 0-6 on the road this year, losing all of their games, despite all those games being at the Missoula Paddleheads. This is their first non-game or game that's not in Missoula or at home in Billings. So that one's fouled off. Counts one and two with two outs. They have struggled on the road, whether it be the Paddleheads that have their number, which they surely do because the Paddleheads have beat them every game between the two this year. Just in general, I think they'll be very happy with how this game is going, trying to get the monkey off their bat and win in an opposing stadium for the first time. And not just that, but with a packed house full of Glacier supporters trying to take in their first ever contest. It is the ultimate spoil to the show here, what they're doing right now, winning 9-1 to one in the top of the fifth. Check swing. Home plate umpire says he went. The appeal over to third also says he went. Jackson Raper doesn't like it. He'll argue with the home plate umpire a little bit and eventually make his way into the dugout. So a big... Third out there, but the three-run shot by Jalen Garcia. It's 9-1. to one. We head to the bottom of the fifth.
You got to tip your cap to the Billings Mustangs offense that has been bringing it all day from the first pitch. They really have come to play, not intimidated by the weather, by the crowd, by opening a new stadium. They have been all over it offensively tonight, but you also have to tip your cap as much as you can to Yasnir Lariano, who has been pitching another gem against the Glacier Range Riders. He brought, I mean, I mean, he exited with a no-hitter the last time he played Glacier. And this one, he took a no-hitter into the fourth before Glacier was finally able to get something across on him. It's one and one, the count to Ryan Cash. But <laughs> Loriano, nine straight innings of no-hit ball versus the Glacier Range Riders. Not exactly a no-hitter, but, you know, something for sure to put um, a feather in his cap in terms of what he's done, and Glacier will be not wanting to see him again. Cash not happy with what he did with that one, as that one is a tricky play down this foul territory side, and it is a successful catch made. Sorry, it's not a best, not a great angle for me to see what exactly happened there as I was kind of poking through this side window that's covered with rain. But essentially the shortstop Hovey, or shortstop Dennison, excuse me, got all the way over there and then ended up ended up having to stick out his glove and make the snag. In foul territory, pop foul out is out number one here in the bottom of the fifth. First pitch to Brant Broussard, up and in. Counts one and L. Pitch misses there. Count now 2-0. and The thing about the Pioneer Baseball League is, you know, and I'm not trying to jinx it by saying this or anything, but there was a lot of offense in this league. And just ask the Idaho Falls Chuckers about that who put up 31 runs the other night. There can be a lot of runs scored, and no lead is safe, especially when you can get into the bullpen. That's a... Baseball fact in general as the count goes to 2-2 two and two against Brant Broussard. One out here at bases empty, bottom of the fifth. When we get more camera angles, or at least a floating camera for you, we'll be able to give you a little bit more of the crowd experience here, but I can tell you the mascots are absolutely incredible. Huck, the grizzly bear, and Cliff, the mountain goat, they're they're great, uh, and they're <laughs> I mean they look great, they act great, and Broussard does a great job at the plate, getting a walk there on a full count, and he will be on first with one out. We flip over the lineup card. Ben McConnell, who walked his last time up, will get a crack at the plate. McConnell's a guy that can exist and survive on a roster pretty much anywhere at this level and because of that speed that he has the ability he has in center field he sees a ball outside there the aggressiveness in which he runs the base paths I, I noticed right off the bat although it was against a Rocky Mountain Vibes team that has struggled the aggressiveness in which Broussard and McConnell ran the base paths and, and not just the aggressiveness the smarts of that aggressiveness was <laughs> really incredible and, and just, just fun to watch. And uh, if they were able to get some cracks on a pitcher and get on base, they could really cause damage. The problem is is that they haven't been able to do that much today against Loriano the way he's been pitching. Nobody has. As the count goes to 2-1 and one after that foul ball from Ben McConnell. Just two hits for the Glacier Range Riders. One across, trailing 9-1 to one here in the bottom of the fifth. Ball's outside there. Three and one is the count. 87 pitches thrown by Yasnir Loriano, but nobody up in the bullpen for the Billings Mustangs. That one will miss, and another walk. That has been the best way that the Range Riders have been able to do damage against these Billings Mustangs, and Yasnir Loriano is by the walk. Only those two hits, but... They've gotten guys on base. The problem is, is Loriano's doing a good job of getting them to ground into double plays soon after that. He's done that a couple times, and they, they haven't even been really close plays at first base. They've been healthy hit shots, 
uh, right to either a second baseman or a shortstop. And right now, a body's getting up in the bullpen after that walk, and there's going to be a mound visit. And I assume it'll be a healthy time talking to the pitcher, Yasner Loriano, as a, the pitching coach, who I assume is out there, in the form of David Peterson. Of course, I can't see his number because he got the jacket on. He actually didn't take that long at all. Fairly casual warm is going on as you do not want pitchers to get hurt warming up in this cold weather. It is 43 degrees, which in theory, if we're in January, Montana, that's very warm and you will take that any day of the week. Problem is, is the wind is cold here uh, on the top of the hill and uh, yeah, it does not, not feel good. First pitch into Gabe Howell. I believe the home plate umpire said he swung there. It didn't look like it to me, and there was no appeal over to first, which surprises me a little bit that Howell didn't try and do exactly what Raper did last inning and double-check with the umpire on the base paths that, you sure You sure I went there? Fouls that one back, and the count is 0-2. One out, runner on second is Broussard. Runner on first is McConnell. How this opening, er, his opening series of the season has been an extra base machine since then, especially against Billings. The well dried up for him. He was able to channel into it a little bit in this last series in Great Falls. But right now, with this speed on the base paths, just anything in terms of a base hit would be able to, to do some damage with the speed on the base pass. That one will miss. Howell gets the benefit of the doubt there. A close pitch. Almost punched him out on three pitches there. One, two, one out. Runners on first and second. Broussard's on second. McConnell's on first. Howell, who does not have a technical at-bat today, swings on that one. It's going to be foul out in front of the Glacier dugout. We'll do one, two again. Two walks for Gabe Howell today. Soon enough, maybe this inning, we'll get to the final line for the Pitcher for the Billings Mustangs. Only four and a third innings pitch, and he's at 92 pitches right now, but just two hits against him. The run against him was earned, but seven walks. That's the big stain on his number right now, and the reason why his pitch count is so high. That one is a called strike three for Gabe Howell, and he goes down with a backwards K, and Brody Wofford will step in now 0 for 2 as the Range Riders' first baseman grounded into a double play his last time up. A 6-4-3 variety double play as the infield will shift a little bit to the right. Hovey getting right on the fringe of the what would be grass if this were a actual grass field. Swung on by Wofford. This one's going to be trouble as everybody's running in and it lands right where the Glacier Range Riders bullpen is in between Left fielder Wirtz, the shortstop Dennison, and the third baseman Raper. Nobody's able to make a grab. And Wofford will get another crack at the plate. Never told you the final line for Noten in his first home start here. Three and one-thirds innings pitched. Six hits, five runs, all earned. Four walks to four strikeouts for the Glacier starter. 0-1 count for Brody Wofford. That pitch will miss high. Wofford, one of the handful of Glacier Range Riders who's got a little hair coming out the back of his helmet. Got a little flow going. The Rome, Georgia native. Played most recently for the Lake Erie Crushers as that's going to be a wild pitch. It goes way beyond the glove of the catcher, Pereira. And now with two outs, two speedy rudders in scoring position, Howell can excuse me, not how Wofford can easily bring in two with a base hit here. He's got a 2-1 count with two outs here on the bottom of the fifth. Two one coming in. Swung on by Wofford. Garcia ranging over. He seems comfortable and he will make the grab for out number three. Another huge jam gotten out of by Loriano. He's thrown some balls, given some walks, 
but has only one across against him. We'll see if we see him in the sixth, but for now, he holds a 9-1 lead as we head to the sixth inning of play. Well, I mentioned him a little bit earlier because I started to get to the point that Sam Linscott's from Marysville, Washington, and there's a pitcher from Maryville, Tennessee, and that's Justin Coleman. Coleman, a right-hander, standing 6'1". He just turned 26 two days ago. So happy birthday to Justin Coleman. But the... Right-hander will throw his first pitch as a range rider. He's a brand-new addition to the roster, and he throws that one low to Gabe Wirtz to start off his outing. He's been sort of all over, started at Cleveland State Community College in Cleveland, Tennessee, not Cleveland, Ohio, as that one will miss maybe a little bit outside there. Eventually went to Bluefield College in Bluefield, Virginia, where he really made a name for himself. That one swung on and fouled back there. His first season at Bluefield College, a 4-0 record, 4-7-0 ERA in 12 appearances, one start. In general, he is a powerful, powerful strikeout pitcher. And maybe I'll jinx him by saying that right now because it's 3-1 to Gabe Wirtz, the number four batter, who is 0 for 3 today, one of the only Billings Mustangs who's struggling offensively. But he'll reach on a walk there to lead off the outing for Coleman. Most recent season that Justin Coleman played was with the Bluefield Ridge Runners. That's in the Appy League that was previously an affiliated league, turned into a summer collegiate baseball league and in that summer season with the Bluefield Ridge Runners he had a three and three record in 17 appearances 35 strikeouts to just 12 walks so that one's a slow roller to Cash who's going to flip over to 
second and get the fielder's choice out there. And that's a tough play for McNicholas to make on the catch as Cash flipped it to him. And then basically, I think the cleat of Wirtz went right into the glove of McNicholas, but he holds on for out number one here in the top of the sixth. That's been a huge difference today, especially with the amount of two out, out RBIs that we've seen from the Billings Mustangs. It's just some slower hit balls in situations where there could be double plays, and that has forced the Range Riders should just get the fielder's choice at second and keep the inning alive a little bit longer. And that has come back to haunt, obviously, with some long balls hit by these Mustangs as well as just in general clutch hitting. That one misses outside to Tristan Peterson. He's had a great day for himself. Two for two is Peterson, the first baseman. Called strike there. Makes it one and one. For Peterson, stands 6-2 out of Tucson, Arizona. Former member of the Washington Wild Things. In the frontier, another independent league baseball team. At some point, I started to give you a Pioneer League scoreboard because I told you earlier today, Grand Junction, beat Northern Colorado, and the reason that game's already done is because they play on the campus of Northern Colorado while they're finishing their stadium, Ticket Smarter Stadium. Uh, it's an entire complex that's going to house a USL League One soccer team as well and have all sorts of facilities for youth sports, a dome. I mean, it's I'm excited to see that too because – it's a different approach where they have the luxury of having a field that meets the capacity requirements for the Pioneer League um, so they can use that in northern Colorado where that does not exist in the Flathead Valley. The next biggest stadium is American Legion Baseball Stadium, which fits some fans, but not enough to meet the Pioneer League capacity requirements and that's the reason why this stadium had to be rushed to get done because if the Range Riders wanted to join the league in 2022 they would need to have a stadium to play in by at least some point into this season pitch misses low there the counts three and two one out here runner on first is Pereira who reached on the fielder's choice Peterson trying to get aboard either with a ball that would be a walk or maybe put the ball into play somehow so Grand Junction Beat Northern Colorado 8-2. to two. And a swing and a miss there. Actually a foul tip into the glove, but goes down the same as a swing and a miss for out number two. First time that Peterson has not reached base. And now Jordan Hovey, who scored the first run of the second inning for the Mustangs, will step in 0 for 3 is he. Top of the seventh, Rocky Mountain Vibes hold a 5-2 to two lead on the Boise Hawks. And... I, I don't mean any offense any time I talk about the Rocky Mountain vibes. Um, they have just a young core. I mean, a young everybody on that team. Um, and at times, they, they do certainly seem a little bit out of their depth. But I think it's better for the league in general if, if they can turn it around. And, and a win at Boise would be a step towards doing that, especially on the road. They're up in Boise. That one will miss the low, counts one and one. Another cross-Montana matchup. The other two Montana teams, the Great Falls Voyagers and the Missoula Paddleheads playing in Missoula. It's four to one Voyagers lead currently. The Idaho Falls Chucker, Chuckers, who are on top of the North Division currently, they hold a nine to nothing lead. Looks like they'll continue to be on top of the Northern Division. That one's fouled back up and over the concourse here. Counts one and two now for Jordan Hovey. One, two, two outs. Runner on first is Pereira. Coleman trying to throw his first professional inning scoreless here. Not on that pitch. 
Misses low count, goes two and two. Hasn't even allowed a hit in this first professional outing. Nick Hogan clearly trying to get a guy that's a solidified reliever has come on uh, in at a, at the high level Appy League, as well as in NAIA ball, and gotten some great plays. And speaking of great plays, what a great play there by the shortstop Austin McNicholas. He scoops that one out of the dirt and then gets up, scampers, and dives into second for an unassisted fielder's choice to end the inning. The defense was there that inning. The pitching was there that inning. But the offense, that's what needs to come. We'll see if it shows up in the bottom of the sixth. Back here in the bottom of the sixth. It's currently nine to one. It's a new pitcher in for the Billings Mustangs. Number 11, Gene Correa. I'll give you the final line on Loriano in a second. A great outing from him. Not that he needed even a half decent outing would have done the would have done the trick as his offense put up nine runs, but a really solid outing for him. First pitch from Correa misses. Count goes to one and oh. Gene Correa. The sixth highest ERA on the team. A 1-0 record, though. 7-7-1 ERA. No starts for him, but four outings. Nine and one-thirds innings pitch. Ten strikeouts to three walks. Strike there makes it 1-1. One one. No outs here. Livingston Morris leads off. That one will skip in. Ball makes it 2-1. and one. And that one, ouch, hits the back of Livingston Morris. That does not feel good on a 75-degree day. It really stings when the wind is cold and it's 43 degrees and raining. Ouch. Took a second there for Livingston Morris to shake that one off, but he scampers on to crack it as hard as he can. He did get the first base hit by 
a range rider in flathead field history and scored the first run. He would love to do that again here. Let's see if the bottom part of the lineup can build on it. Not completely in the build, in the bottom part of the lineup. We're at the halfway point. Just over it. No, right on it. Jared Fry, the number five batter. Four on each side of him. He is the pinnacle of the lineup. 0-1 coming into him. <laughs> that one will miss low. Count is one and one to Jared Fry. Jared Fry, I think I already mentioned him. He's kind of, he lived that journeyman life last year with the Houston Apollos in the American Association, who obviously, with the Winnipeg Gold Eyes, not being able to play last year in the American Association because they are a Canadian team and the border for most of last summer was pretty much uncrossable. Um, they, the American Association added the Houston Apollos as a one-year only team. And as happens with these kind of especially one-year only traveling type teams just to fill a spot for a temporary time, um, typically they struggle. Um, and the Houston Polos did do that. They didn't get a ton of wins. And you're seeing that right now in the Frontier League. They have the Empire, Gray, Empire State Grays, who are a traveling team. Technically, quote-unquote, based out of New York, the Empire State, but play every game on the road. And they have... At least last time I checked, not won a game. That one's hit by Jared Fry out into center field. Diving to make the play is Jalen Garcia. And you've seen plenty of his worth on offense. You see what he can do on defense there as he can cover some territory. And a good hit ball by Jared Fry comes up with nothing. One out here in the bottom of the third. Up now we got Sam Linscott. Pitch into him, hits the strike zone. Count is 0-1. Just double check before I actually claimed it as that one gets by the catcher. Going to be a wild pitch to get Morris beyond the first base checkpoint that he'd reach and get him to the second base checkpoint. Wild pitch puts him in scoring position for Linscott who drove him home the last time Morris was on second on a base hit. And I did double check at the Empire State Grays currently do not have a win. And the Frontier League is over uh, right, right where the Pioneer League is, about a quarter of the way through their season. Traveling teams can struggle there for sure, and it is not not a fun lifestyle for sure. It's the lifestyle that these range riders lived in in the first part of their season with the first three weeks being on the road, over 2,000 miles covered as that one misses. Counts now 3-1. and one. Hitters count for Lynn Scott. One for two today with that first ever RBI here for a home team at Flathead Field, the home team at Flathead Field. 3-1, one, one out, runner on second. Pitch will miss low and inside. Ball four puts Linscott on second. Austin McNicholas still looking for his first ever professional hit. Steps into the right-handed batter's box and outsteps the Billings Mustangs pitching coach. David Peterson will have another talk with his pitcher. While he's doing that, I'm going to give you the final line on the outstanding day from Laureano. Five full innings pitched, only two hits against him, one run that was earned, four strikeouts, seven walks. 
He's going to want to get that walk number down. But really, when you have the defense that backed him up and you just in general have the ability to get weak contact when you need it, get clutch pitching when you need it, and the four strikeouts were big for him at big points. And you saw him come out here. He, he had not even stepped foot on the mound, and he had a two to nothing lead. And from there, he, he built on it well. His offense continued getting some runs for him. And the next thing you know, they're up nine to one here in the bottom of the sixth. And the first pitch to McNicholas just touches the top of the strike zone called strike count is 0 and 1. And that's the hat trick of bat slippage from Austin McNicholas. Uh, swinging a foul ball there. Just got a piece of it and put it to the back netting. But his bat went all the way to third base as it, again, escapes his grip. And something that I'm sure, while it's very clearly physical, it's also just as much mental now for him as he doesn't want to swing and have it slip out of his gra grasp. As it happened twice in his first at bat, and then here again, as I don't have a good sense of the rain other than the raindrops on the window that's in front of me but most likely still coming down in some way if he's still getting that bat to slip out of his hands that one misses don't know exactly where it missed that was one of those that was close enough could have fooled me into strike three one two one out runners on first and second here range riders trying to get something across offensively and take a chip out of the lead another foul ball and another bat he had the hat trick. Now he's now he's got even more. <laughs> As third base coach Stu Peterson, the first time he uh, <laughs> he he hucked the bat over there, Peter Stu Peterson walked it pretty much all the way to the bat boy. Let the bat boy walk it off. That time Peterson said, I, <laughs> "I'm all out. I'm all out of you know walking this bat to you, man." Um, and uh, Foul ball means another chance for a first professional hit or maybe another another accidental throw of the bat from McNicholas who is trying to figure out how to get a good grip on it. He might have just taken off batting gloves. I think he did because now he's barehanded out there. I don't think he had that before, but hands are probably awfully cold, so he's probably hoping this at-bat is quick for him. Makes contact with that one. Fouls it back and keeps a hold of his bat. Gets a good crowd from his <laughs> hometown, a good cheer from his hometown crowd. Don't know the amount of sarcasm with everybody, but the fans I had had some sort of sarcasm with it. But I'm sure they're just happy that the game can go on a little quicker because they're probably fairly cold. And if the Range Riders are going to have a comeback, it's going to take a while. That one swung on, hit weakly back to first. Difficult play for the pitcher. Correa will just throw it all the way to the bullpen of the Mustangs. One will come home. Two will come home. Going all the way to third is McNichols. Safe at home is Lipscott. Linscott, excuse me. It might go down as a base hit and then a two-base error. Whatever it goes down as. A huge, huge play there as Correa had to field his position. It was a tough play from the get-go. McNicholas was flying down the line, and then that pitch or that throw over to first was nowhere near the first baseman, Peterson, and uh, it, it was – Kind of slow to react from the Billings defense. They've been stellar all day today, but that was a situation where the right fielder, Cruz Taylor, wasn't really in any position when that error happened to back that up, and it took him a while to get to it, and he eventually did and put a decent throw home, but not enough to get Lynn Scott, who was scoring all the way from first base. And now on third with one out, we're going to get another pitching change, a short outing for Correa, Currently, 
And this is, again, depending. It, it does go down as an error. I just don't know if it's a hit, then an error, or an error to start. And I'm not even near the official scores. So it's something I'll have to check on. I think for now, I would call that a hit and an error because that, that would have been a tough play for Correa to make. Um, but clearly you cannot sail it over your first baseman's head like he did there. So as far as I'm concerned, well, actually, right now, looking over at the scoreboard, there is an error, but it's still a two in the hit column. So I believe it will go down as a three-base error for McNicholas. And a crucial one at that. It'll end his outing. We got the new pitcher in here warming up. We're going to let him warm up. And we'll be right back on YouTube. It's now 9-3 to three in favor of the Billings Mustangs. So the Billings Mustangs opt to go with Bo Bovelin, who gets a swing and a miss from the switch hitting Ryan Cash on the first pitch that he sees today from the right-handed batter's box. Bovelin's been one of the better relievers for the Billings Mustangs this year. Five appearances, no starts. That's a foul ball there to make it 0-2. Five appearances, no starts, a 1-0 record. Five total innings pitched. And seven strikeouts to just one walk. He's facing Cash now. Broussard's on deck if we get there. A runner on first in a 9-3 ball game. 0-2 count coming in to Ryan Cash. Pitch misses. Count goes now to 1-2. One out here. Cash on the day, 0 for 2. And he's somebody I already mentioned. His batting average flew up in Great Falls. He's somebody that was electric in the electric city. 1 2. Swung on. That one's going to be a slow roller to second. Tough play for Hovey, who picks it up and flips to first. Out at first. Crowd doesn't like it. It will score a run. An RBI 4-3 ground out from Ryan Cash makes it 9-4. As the Range Riders get just a little bit closer, but right now they need to get runs, or they need to preserve their outs just as much as they need to get runs, and Cash not being able to beat that one out is big. A great play by Hovey to scoop that one and flip it to Peterson just in time for the big second out of the inning. First pitch into Brant Broussard, misses high and away. 9-4 to four is the score with Austin McNicholas scoring his first ever professional run. That one will miss, counts now 2-0 to Brant Broussard. Broussard, I've already mentioned his journey a little bit from LSU. I mean, one of the you know, the, the peaks of not just college baseball, but the SEC, man, he's played in some of the best baseball games and baseball atmospheres in the country. Today I was running around so much, didn't get a chance to talk to any of the players other than make sure we were pronouncing their names correctly. But one of the questions to ask him is, of, of course, this night, a little bit soured by the rain and the weather. But in terms of opening up a brand new stadium, despite it not being the sellout crowds that he's performed in front of in, in, regional, in regionals and super regionals, I mean, he probably got to put this 
with one of those really cool experiences, uh, I, I seeing all the players walk in for the first time and be here for some of the construction of the stadium, it's it's been really cool. Three two. Swung on and missed. Strike three. We end the sixth inning, but three runs across on no hits and one error. 31 pitch inning from the two Billings Mustangs pitchers. We'll see Dennison, Ulch, and Taylor in the top of the seventh. Uh, fans, I don't know what just happened. You maybe were watching it on your screen. But we are through six innings, which is the point in which a game can become final in the Pioneer League. And it seems that the umpires... We're pretty much ready to call it a day after that. I, I'm, I'm sure there's just as much confusion in the press box on the other side where the PA announcer hit is as we are here. We still have a good amount of fans out. And I think the umpires just might have ended the game, <laughs> which is... 100% in their right to do. But I first noticed something was going on when I looked up in between the innings and saw the manager for the Glacier Range Riders, Nick Hogan, absolutely losing his mind. And the final play of that bottom of the sixth inning was a swing and a miss from Brant Broussard. You can't argue that much about that. There wasn't any controversial calls in that inning, I don't think. But it seems he was mad because maybe they're calling it a game, but I have not seen any of the batters move from the dugouts. And there's been no official word from the press box, which is probably just as stunned as I am right now. We are in the top of the seventh. It's 9-4. to four. The Mustangs lead the Glacier Range Riders. Is it final? I don't know. It's raining, but we just played seven innings, and except for a couple bats flying to the outfield, I mean, uh, nobody in the Billings Mustang dugout is moving. I'm <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. I, I mean, I, I they're acting like it's a delay, but I don't know what happened other than the fact that we got through six innings that would make it. Now the time to call it into a delay. So, you know, it's been study rain all day, and the players and the fans have all dealt with it, and there's been no official word from anywhere, and we're at the point where, you know, fans are just kind of confused. So we're going to keep the broadcast live for now because it doesn't seem like anybody's packing up. But the umpires have left the field. So call us in a delay for now, and we will uh, give you some updates when we get a chance. Maybe we're final 9-4. to four, Maybe we're not. Keep, keep this on. Keep it off mute, and I'll, uh, I'll unmute myself and hop on the mic when I have an update for you. All right. Thanks, folks.
Hey fans, I'm hopeful that you're still tuned in here a little bit. We might get some baseball started again. Don't know exactly what changed to cause the rain delay. Talking with everybody that was out there and kind of experiencing the rain. Not much change um, by the end of the sixth inning compared to how the rest of the game was. But for some reason, we were put into a rain delay. All the players have stayed in their dugouts and continued to freeze in there. The umpires have gone off the field, but in theory it was just a rain delay of about 30 minutes. The rain doesn't seem to have changed. Most fans have left, and uh, maybe we'll still get a game in? Finished? I don't know. It, it, it is a unique situation here, and I mean, just, just for the kind of the lack of clarity and reasoning, um, a, a frustrating kind of fizzle here, even though the, the score was frustrating enough for Glacier Range Riders viewers. The, uh, this situation doesn't help at all. A lot of fans are making their way out, not knowing uh, the comeback that's maybe about to ensue for the Glacier Range Riders. Anything can really happen. Both pitchers are probably done now, even though we did see a good first inning of work from Justin Coleman, who, like I said, probably done now. So we'll see what happens. Um, there's going to be have to be some sort of warm up when if we do get going again. Um, it's uh, yeah, you you can see why Nick Hogan is mad and Jim Riggleman didn't seem to put up much of an argument, but they didn't really talk to Jim Riggleman. They just kind of exchanged a few words with the Billings Mustangs dugout and then walked off the field so still in wait right now for what the conclusion of this game will be I invite you to keep us on keep us off mute and uh, go and you know do your laundry in the other room and uh, I'll be right back on to let you know any updates they said about 30 minutes from the time we cut off which is <laughs> about five minutes from now so I don't see the umpires. Maybe we get a conclusion, or maybe they'll just call it. I don't know for sure. Don't have that many answers, but I'll let you know, hopefully with an update pretty soon, with either the fact that I still don't have any answers, or maybe I'll find some. All right. Keep, uh, keep tuned in on here.
Hey fans, uh, unfortunately, I have been given the official word that this is the conclusion of tonight's game. It concludes with a final score of 9-4, to four, a, a rough way to open Flathead Field and an anticlimactic finish to it in the end here, uh, especially with, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe something brewing, albeit from an error mostly, but four, three runs across. In the bottom of the sixth, the fans got something to cheer about, and they end on somewhat of a high note in terms of what they saw on the field of play. In terms of the actual game, not able to see a nine-inning game here at Flathead Field. Maybe we'll try again tomorrow night. I'm going to get myself kind of put together um, in terms of what to do for tomorrow and figure out some of the stats you can check go rangeriders.com for the latest scores and updates and uh yeah i'll give you a winning pitcher on the post game story and a losing pitcher as well most likely but just just check the social media feeds for updates and fans in general you're gonna see teams be able to play here um but the question then comes to how much are the umpires willing to see before they call the game? And the answer to this one was six full innings. And that is all she wrote from Flathead Field. The final score, 9-4. to four. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7.05 per first pitch. Join in a little bit early. And we'll bring you into that contest. Another battle as the Range Riders look for their first win ever at Flathead Field as well as their first win ever against the 74-year-old Billings Mustangs. Maybe tomorrow will be that historic night. Until then, thank you so much for joining me on this broadcast. It has been an absolute pleasure, despite the weirdness, to bring you the first ever game from a stadium that is going to be untouched, especially by the time it's done throughout the Rocky Mountain region, the Pioneer League, and especially independent baseball my name is scott gladstone again thank you so much for the 1027 of you that joined in tonight have a great night go range riders and please stay safe out there